Captain Check 2 like, uh, entitled CO2 monitor from BCI. And basically there's a couple things to the unit. The unit comes like this with a purple rubber boot on it. You also get with it a battery and a battery charger. Now the way the unit works is it is for monitoring entitled CO2 and respirations per minute. First thing you have is a gas manifold that goes right here on the back as you can see it just lure slips in. Then you're going to have your entitled CO2 tubing or nasal cannula as we refer to it. Yeah. And basically it just lure locks right onto the back. Excellent. Now you can use just the uh, nasal cannula sampling line for CO2 or you can use a divided nasal cannula which would allow you to administer oxygen and uh, monitor the entitled CO2. Basically the way the unit works is to turn it on, you just press the little button down here in the bottom left hand corner. So we wait for the unit to warm up, it powers up, and as you can see there, up top here you have uh, where you're going to be monitoring your entitled CO2 through the nasal cannula, and then down here will be your respirations per minute should start getting a reading here pretty quickly. There we go. All right, so now you've got your respirations per minute. We'll be a little bit higher probably since I'm talking. Your entitled CO2 should begin moving up here momentarily. Um, now down here you'll see this tells us a battery life it's full battery full power battery the battery is inserted right here the battery itself will give you about eight hours of continuous use we do have a battery eliminator which you can put in here and then hook it into an ac dc plug and then you have continuous battery then what we have is um, you can get a pole mount for the unit that will mount it on a pole then what we have is you can do what we call different waveforms. You have interval waveform, and then you have full-fledged waveform. Can you see the waveform there, Chris? Yes. Okay. All right. Now it does have a full set of menu buttons here. You just press the menu from the menu. Oh, that's our alarm button. So if you want to silence the alarms, you can just press that button right there in the bottom right hand corner until you see the yellow light stay on permanently. That silences your alarms. Now from the menu uh, screen there, you can adjust and go to your backlight. You can adjust the backlight of it, the contrast. You can also control the alarm limits, okay? For instance, we'll look at the alarm limits. Press the uh, menu button again, and here comes up your alarm limits. So what we do is right now, it's we have the alarm set on entitled CO2, high is at 55. If we wanted to change that, we would just press the menu button and it highlights it. Then we can make it go up or down. In this case, we're going to take it down to 54. Then we press the menu button, and that locks it in at 54. Then we press the down button over here, and that sends it over to the low setting for entitled CO2. And then what we can do is just press the menu button again. That highlights the low uh, parameter there of 15. We can take that to 16 by pressing the up arrow key or we could take it down to 14, 13, whatever it may be. So we'll move it back right there and then we'll press the button. Now we've set the alarm settings for the entitled CO2. If we wanted to do respirations per minute, we would just go right down here to the next respiration rates per minute. Right now we've got the alarm set at 44. If we want to change that, we just press the menu button using the arrow key up or down, we can adjust it. And once it's adjusted, press the menu button again and it's locked in. Good. Then the same thing on the low rating. Right now it's five, we can just press the menu button, 
change it up or down, and then press the menu button to lock it in. To exit this, we just press till the little arrow goes down to exit, then we press the menu button again. Okay, now to exit the menu, we can also set the volume, okay, of the alarms. We can also set capnography to turn it on or off, which you would want to always leave it on. We can also set trends and printer. But in this case, we're going to go on down to the exit on the menu button. As you see right there, a little arrow is pointing on the exit. Uh -huh. Then you press menu button, and you're right back where you were. Sounds great. So that's pretty much the unit in a nutshell. It is very light, compact. It weighs about two pounds. Uh, the gas manifold, we suggest that it be changed every case. However, it depends on whatever your policy is for the yes. particular physician's office. Naturally, the nasal cannulas are single patient use. Yes. Well, thank you very much. It's great. Turn the unit off, you press it one time, it tells you you will be losing your information. As far as uh, patient records, there is a printer you can get with it that has to sit somewhere between 6 or 12 inches or less in proximity to the unit. It has to sit on this side because you have your infrared printer. Your infrared beam comes out right here, your infrared printer would sit right here. You can print out data. It will not print waveform, but it will print data. So once you press, you're fixing to turn it off, once you press it one time, it's telling you that if you turn the unit off, all that data will be lost. And then you hit it a second time, and it's, it's off. off. Very good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. How do you mount this to a uh, IV pole? You just set the unit like that. Mm -hmm. It comes with a bracket that would have a little opening in the bottom so I you see. can take your and it would sit, it's in an L-shaped bracket. Okay. And then you would have one little screw that oh, screws in right there. Excellent. And then you have the bracket that mounts it to the pole. Sounds great. Well, thank you very much.